Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Castro and I'm a computer science major at the Georgia Institute of Technology. Today I will be talking about one of the extra credit lectures that I attended for my Physics 2212 course. The lecture was titled, Pattern Formation in Nature, Why is the Universe Not Boring? by Dr. Stephen Morris. First I'd like to give a little bit of, a, of background about Dr. Morris from the University of Toronto. Dr. Morris does a lot of work in observing patterns in nature that occur due to physics. So much, in fact, that if I were to summarize the one thing that I learned from this lecture, it would be how the different, how if we observe the different patterns that we see in our day-to-day -day life, most of them, and I'd say all of them, can be explained in some way or another by physics. And it's it's interesting to think about the different patterns that we see in that way because then it allows us to explain the simple physics phenomena that could be occurring in that situation. The most intriguing experiment that I found um, in his lecture was the experiment. Um, of segre the segregation of sand. The first experiment he did um, was fairly amazing. He essentially had um, black and white um, sand that was mixed together. He was managed to uh, he managed to separate it in a certain way. Um, I tried the experiment myself. I was not very successful. You can see the picture I'll pull up. Um, if you pour two different grains of sand um, that have been mixed into one thin rectangular box, and you pour them right into the center. Um, what then happens is that the sand begins to segregate, and I'll explain why in a second. But the reason why my experiments didn't work um, were mostly because I didn't have the right grains. So the grains are supposed to be from fairly similar density, and I just had random grains of different colors that I was trying. First I tried sugar with paprika, which was not a good combination. I tried uh, different sized beans, so essentially much larger grains. And I also tried lemon pepper powder just to see if I could separate the lemon, the grains of lemon from the grains of pepper, but that also didn't work very well. You could see some patterns, but they weren't exactly the patterns I was looking for. Um, despite that this wasn't successful, it really got me thinking as to what's going on in the experiment and how the experiment actually works. So the explanation that I have is that you have this thin rectangular sheet and you're pouring mixed grains into it. And this is somewhat what he explains well in class. Um, as you start creating the the mound, um, both mixed grains are falling, but the larger grains are quicker to go to the ground, and then the smaller grains accumulate at the top of the mound. Now, as they accumulate more and more, um, they essentially reach their breaking point and then kind of avalanche down, and that's what creates the stripes on the side. So you'll get a bunch of lar the large grains falling to the bottom. You get the lar the stripe of large grains, and then when the collapse of the smaller grains happens and you get the stripe of the smaller grains and then this cycle repeats as you continue to pour grains down and that's essentially um, what creates the different the, the different or that specific pattern in nature uh, now obviously that's a controlled experiment but that wasn't even the coolest part the coolest part was yet another experiment in sand segregation and I did a very weak attempt at replicating this one but after reading Dr. Morris's paper on sand segregation in, in this part, it turns out you need about, I think, 5,000 or more turns of a cylindrical. So essentially the experiment is you get a cylinder, right? And you put two different types of grains in the cylinder as opposed to in a rectangular slit. Now in this, you rotate the cylinder constantly and over time, the sand actually um, segregates into stripes of black, white, black, white, depend given that you use black and white sand, obviously. Now, he performed this experiment back in 2005 with his colleagues Christopher Charles and Sena Khan. I'll try to link the actual paper down there, but the cool thing is that um, I highly recommend reading the paper that he wrote on it. The paper is titled, Pattern Scaling and the Actual Segregation of Granular Materials in a Rotating Tube. Um, the paper is really cool. So, um, it's important that um, we highlight the basic parameters that were defined in the paper. First of all, the grains must be of approximately the same density, but must have a different grain size. Um, even better, if the diameter of the cylinder becomes too small, the grains seem to no longer segregate, which I also found really interesting. Um, in the experiment, he's rotating the tube at about 2.5 radians per second, and they added a little bit of anti-static powder to the two grains in order to potentially prevent other factors from changing the results of the experiment um, and essentially eliminating other causes of the experiment. Now, I found the coolest the fact that at, a, at the diameter of 1.9 centimeters, the grains stopped segregating. They said they ran this for several hours. It doesn't actually state how many, but the, um, 
in comparison, for a diameter of 2.35 centimeters, which is only slightly bigger, um, it took a crazy 15 hours to segregate. Just to put this in perspective, I did a little bit of math, and hopefully I'll be able to kind of write it down um, on the screen here. Um, so 360 degrees, which is one full turn, is 6.3 radians. Um, it was rotating at 2.5 radians per second, which therefore gives us 2.52 radians per second, sorry, 2.52 seconds for it to complete one complete turn. Um, now, if we calculate how many turns are in an hour, um, then we can get, obviously, the turns in 15 hours. So, you have 3,600 uh, seconds in an hour. So, when you divide 3,600 by 2.52, and you get that there's approximately 1,429 turns in one hour, which means it took a total of 21,435 turns to separate the sand, pa sand particles in a cylinder of 2.35 centimeters. Now, if this cylinder is increased, um, and they tried it, I believe, until like 11 centimeters, if you increase it to about 11 centimeters, the sand segregates in about five minutes or something, the time is a lot less. And it seems linear, well, the graph they had seemed somewhat linear, but it could also be exponential. Um, there wasn't enough data for uh, at least me to uh, draw conclusions from it. But it may be the case that the only reason the, um, the diameter of the 1.9 centimeter tube didn't segregate uh, was because they just didn't run it for enough hours. It might have taken days to actually segregate. And that's something that I found very intriguing and overall really cool in his experiment. So yeah, that's all I had. Cheers.